before we begin, thank you very much to Lang and Ath for joining the Patreon campaign. Thank you very much for the help. Thank you for helping to keep the channel going. Deeply appreciate it. Uh, if you'd like to do the same, even if it's just a buck or two a month, link is in the description below. Please consider it because it does keep the lights on and keeps the daily content coming. Uh, and it helps out a lot. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. So... It's the last of the March fan streams for Transformers. They almost got through this one leak-free in a court of sign sort of roundabout way. Uh, except they did that thing where they decided to let the partners do the revealing the night before or the morning of their own announcements, which I don't agree with. I don't really agree with letting other outlets being the news source when you have the opportunity to be the news source seems weird but you know what whatever it's the first place you get to hear about it and not just read a press release so i guess that's the appeal here so yeah it's the final run for these fan streams so we do have quite a bit to talk about because they did show off quite a few things including one item in particular i have been interested in for most of my life so let us move on here and we'll start with they start with an interview portion um, with the artist who did the new album cover for the new release of the Transformers soundtrack on vinyl. Um, so I'm just, I'm just going to say this. There's nothing against what these two people have done for Transformers, nothing against the work they do, but I just felt like she was not a great presenter. She doesn't carry the same energy or like audible interest that you know evan b mac and you know and mark kind of give when they're presenting toys she didn't really seem to have so it's kind of a boring presentation and then kind of a boring interview uh like when when the first thing when the first thing he says is you know i'm normally a poster artist so uh it was really challenging because the cover was a square so it made it harder Uh, it also didn't help that they were doing this uh, over webcam stream, like they were they were just live streaming this discussion. It's pre-recorded, but it's a live stream recording, so there's like that awkward like silence in between when they're talking because of the lag. It was a very uh, awkward segment. Um, not not a fan of how they presented it. They were talking about this though, which is a re-release of the Transformers vinyl. Uh, not entirely new. There are two new songs added to it, so kind of cool. Uh, and of course, brand new artwork. Uh, it is, admittedly, it does give you more appreciation for what goes into something like this. Like, it seems simple, but there's so much work that goes into it because all these characters have to be individually drawn and painted, and then the layout is done, and then you find out, well, uh, they did a lot of work on Jazz just for, you know, for most of his body to be cut out. You, you know the weird thing about this? Do you notice these? You notice the really weird thing about this cover? So it's all 84 cast. It's actually all cast from the first episode. Except in the back, we have Ultra Magnus. Just out of nowhere. Odd choice. Odd choice. Uh, but they also announced that, okay, there's some collectible coins uh, for Transformers. So you get to see. Uh, you know, you get you get to have that if you're a coin collector. Uh, also, a pair of medallions, which are much larger, one for Autobots and one for Decepticons. This is like these weird little like niche collectible thing that I don't really think much of. But then again, when I checked on Hasbro Pulse at one, you know, a few minutes after, because I like five minutes after one p.m. when I went to go get my pre-orders in, um, these were already sold out. They were the first things to sell out, which was weird. So suffice to say, definitely an audience. They did officially announce the comic book Shockwave, which we've already seen. It's been announced elsewhere, so nothing hugely exciting there. It still looks really cool. I still really like the, the comic book shading they did on these things. I like the submarine mode. Submarine mode still looks cool. And yeah, they do mention the, the, uh, the Optimus Prime head. That is included. They actually did mention that there is a little bit of, uh, there is just a little bit of self-assembly with this one. 
like the little stand, little prongs that keep the head up, you do have to uh, t uh, to, uh, take those off a sprue and put them on yourself. <laughs> so a little bit of old school do it yourself, you know, some assembly required going into this one. Um, I will take, I will accept that to get a very weird niche accessory out of this. Uh, also, they cannot advise you to rip your toys apart and swap parts around, but um, they did point out that the head is entirely compatible with Earthrise Optimus Prime. If you want a more Marvel-esque version of uh, Optimus Prime on your shelf, that is something you can do as well, which was kind of a cool thing to point out. Kind of a cool trick that it can do. So we know about that one already. Here's one that we actually did find out about in this stream. Well, it got leaked ahead of time the night before. Um, so um, this is the brand new four pack. Because uh, you know they love to do these four packs of just completely random characters. Uh, so once again, similar to the gold bug pack, this one is one Autobot versus three villains. I don't know why they like these like super skewed, like unfair numbers, but you know, then again, it's prime cliff jumper. He probably likes it this way. Speaking of, yes, he is a remold of chase and I'm a little bit disappointed. They did mention that there were two options that people were really pushing for online. It would have been cliff jumper and lockdown. I was team lockdown because I thought this would have made a really cool cyberverse lockdown. Um, Hasbro disagreed with me. Uh, they decided to do uh, cliff jumper instead. And I will admit when people pointed out elements that kind of matched prime cliff jumper, my brain went, yeah, that's probably going to be it, isn't it? Huh? Like, <laughs> like just kind of like lamenting the fact that it was going to be right. Cause I just, I just want a really nice lockdown toy. Uh, but it doesn't, it doesn't do a too bad of a job as cliff jumper. They work the horns in. Um, he still looks enough like a, like a retro, like muscle car to get away with it. So still looks good. And yeah, I will admit, yeah. Uh, the mold really wears the character. Well, like this is not one of those like shoehorned in kind of homage characters. This actually looks like it was intentional. This actually works really, really nicely. So cool. Cool to get the character back out there. Certainly better than the, uh, the pro I, I will say this, like, it's it's hard to upgrade from some of the previous toys these prime characters have, especially if you consider first edition. I will at least say this is a better mainline cliff jumper than what he got in Transformers Prime. I hated that thing. Uh, but no, it's a it's a really cool mold. Uh, they did change up the weapon accessories, so you do have his three barrel blaster. Uh, really cool of them to manage to include that one too. So cliff jumper works here. Cliff jumper actually works. It's a nice little homage. It's a nice retooling. They showed off another really random one, which was Squeeze Play, very slowly getting out Headmaster Juniors, as they explained. Um, so this is our Titans Return Mind Wipe retool, and that's uh, it's kind of cool to know that on in weird situations like this, those Titans Return molds are still usable. Like, they haven't gotten too old to use yet. They're still, like, cost-effective to use, which is nice to know, because there's a few out there that I would still like Hasbro to finish a set of. Hello, Diaclone Topspin, please. Uh, he looks fine in robot mode, maybe a little bit plain, but then again, there's never anything that's really stood out about the robot mode style on Squeeze Play, so benefit it out. Um, but then, yeah, um... Okay, um, yeah, uh, so this is what I mean when I say forced in. This kind of feels forced into the figure. I do think it is clever using Mind Wipes Engineering to come up with basically, you know, how Squeeze Play worked as a G1 toy. It just really doesn't suit well. Like, I feel like there's like three missing transformation steps to really make this thing work. Um, at least I'll say like this photo looks better than, uh, the other stock photo they had. This just kind of looks awful. Not going to lie. Um, I will say like the one they had on the table actually did look a little bit better. I think it's because they might've had the arms raised up a little bit. Um, I'm going to be interested when someone gets this in hand to see how much play there is in that kind of monster Cobra head. Cause really like what it needs that that really needs to come down. So that cowl is flush to the top of the torso. 
and the head is just jutted forward. That would look way better than what this is. Um, as it stands, it's missing a lot. It's not really what I would want out of a modern Squeeze play. It, I mean, Squeeze plays a very minor character. I, I very well know he's not going to get a brand new tooling specifically for him. It's just going to be like this. No avoiding that. Okay, fine. I'll take what I can get. Uh, but man, it's a, uh, it's going to be one of those that never leaves robot mode. I'm going to say that there's one Predacon in the pack just to be weird. And it is Tarantulas in his original intended color scheme. This was a really cool thing for them to do. Okay. So they've done this with some of the previous Beast Wars toys. I'm glad they went back and did it with Tarantulas. Uh, now originally he was supposed to be this translucent Brown, which came across kind of orange on camera. And I'm glad they didn't go with the translucent. Glad they didn't go with the translucent. So yeah, he looks much more like a realistic tarantula, the way he was supposed to originally. Um, admittedly, the original toy had black legs instead of gray, but I can understand, one, they need to work gray into the color scheme, because that was part of the original color scheme for the prototype toy. And it does make him a little bit different from his previous figures, you know, just a little bit more. When we get into the robot mode, this is where things get a little bit odd. So, um, I went back, um, I went back to the commercial to actually see what colors were going on. And I know, I knew for a fact that the, that the head was flat gray with black eyes. I knew that, um, it was the arms. It was the green that threw me off. Fortunately, there is a prototype tarantulas on eBay. It's 2,200 bucks, so uh, good luck owning it. However, the design itself is the original one that we saw in the first Transformers commercials. It is one of the only ones in the world that represent Tarantulas in his original intended release. So, okay, admittedly, extremely cool piece. But I went back and, yeah, sure enough, that design used a dull shade of green for some of its parts. I totally forgot that. So the green on the arms, completely valid. Cool. Uh, the head is completely whatever they wanted to do. <laughs> um, now, they did explain on stream that the tones were designed to match that, those on the, uh, the, uh, the multi-pack Black Arachnia, who was based on how her packaging art looked. So, wild original toy colors plus leopard print and all kinds of craziness. So, the, the two were designed to be companion pieces. And in that, okay, I will give you that. It's a weird alternate universe thing where they're like sibling units and match very, very well. Okay, that actually makes sense. So, they'll make a good duo if you've gotten both of these four packs. Um, and then there's the big Voyager of the set. And it's Tarn. Uh, specifically, Cyberverse Tarn. And... It looks just like normal Tarn. In vehicle mode, you might not be able to spot much. There's a little bit of deco change, a little bit of difference. Uh, the robot mode does definitely show a lot of significant difference, especially in the midsection where there's a lot more silver and gold. The the uh, purples have been darkened down, except on his feet where it looks like he's wearing bright purple sandals. I don't get it, but it is what it is. So there's no new tooling on this figure to make it match Cyberverse Tarn. It's just a straight repaint of the Legacy version. And that's fine because the Legacy Tarn toy is a really good toy. It's a really good figure. And this is another way of getting it out there uh, for people who might want an alternate take on it or just have some copy of it. Now we know it's going to get re-released re at the end of Legacy United if the leaks are to be believed package refreshes can kind of be a mixed bag of whether or not they get released or not but i would say it's more inspired by cyberverse because the cyberverse tarn design does have a lot of details that do not match idw's um they do make a note of including the sword that came with bludgeon so you do have a little bit more accessory play with this one that's cool as long as the you know, it, they added it to the mold, so, you know, why not just include a sword for no reason? Uh, it gives more accessory. I have no problem with that. Here's where I have my problem. Here's where I have my problem. Uh, stock photographers from Hasbro, please stop posing him like this. Stop posing the toys in this kneeling pose. You're not doing the toy any favors. You're taking so much of the coolness out of this toy. 
I don't know why they keep posing him like this. It just takes away from his stature so much. Stop it. Stop it. Uh, packaging is interesting, too. Uh, once again, it's under Legacy United. It is a Target exclusive set. I do. I. I, I mean, uh, I think it's. They said that uh, this might be coming to fan retailers as well. I might be mistaken on that. Uh, but we know it's coming to Target, uh, and uh, yeah, <laughs> it just it points out how wildly outnumbered Cliff Jumper is, which is kind of hysterical to me. Um, I think one of the things about this that's interesting to me is once again, it's not buzzworthy bumblebee branded so I, I feel like once again we are just done with that imprint and once all those yellow boxes are out of target you're never going to see them again uh so just get ready for just like little segmented exclusives like it used to be uh kind of i kind of prefer it that way honestly keep it keeps keeping it all together you know make a little bit more sense one less toy line to keep track of okay we've waited long enough Let's get to the big deal. Let's get to the main event of this stream. This is another one that they almost got to be the first ones to talk about it, but they had a partner announce it first, so whatever. My dreams are coming true. <laughs> we have officially a Ninja Turtle Transformer toy. There is a small child within me that is screaming right now, which means I made very poor lunch choices. But I'm also extremely happy to see this. I grew up on Transformers. I grew up on Ninja Turtles. These are two of my favorite franchises of all time. They are now together. Um, this is it is so much better than just oh, this is this, you know, like this is a mutating figure. You know, this is the turtle van, but it turns into, you know, uh it, it turns into Splinter with the proportions of a refrigerator. No, no, this is the this is the party wagon. And it's straight out of the cartoon, with the yellow on the side rather than the orange blast door. Guns on the top, spoiler in the back, details are spot on to the cartoon rather than the toy. A little bit of the toy in there still, though. It looks beautiful. I love how this looks. It looks absolutely gorgeous. I love that it's so solid all the way around. Like the back of it, they did not they did not cheap out on the back like they do on some Transformer toys. Tail lights, back windows, all painted, all solid, all the way around. You'd have to pay attention to realize that this is a transforming figure rather than just, you know, some odd Ninja Turtle party wagon that you're expecting a bunch of weapons or something to pop out of. Nope, it's its its own thing. Now... They're continuing the tradition of these crossovers being completely new characters. So the official Transformer character for this design is Party Wallop, which admittedly, not a cool name. Sounds like a name that Playmates would come up with for a Turtles thing. But uh, yeah, uh, we don't care. I don't think anyone is going to call this Party Wallop unless it's for legal reasons or to help you Google search for where to buy one. No, no, no. Um, we are going to call this the party wagon. Um, and it's a little bit messy here. A little bit messy here, but then again, you're trying to turn a yellow van into a green turtle. So leeway has to be provided here. Um, it does get better, though. It does get better, though. So party wallop here has the ability to be converted into any of the four Ninja Turtles. You take off the front, immediately looks better. So, uh... Yeah, um, and I will accept that. I will accept that little bit of part forming and, oh, it's a shield. Because it is designed to be a completely different character in a solid robot mode. And then it can convert into any of the four Ninja Turtles uh, by, one, putting on weapon accessories. Two, swapping a new head plate. And three, rotating around the belt buckle. Apparently, this is just something that can, like, dial, spin around. They didn't demonstrate it. But they said that the belt itself could be rotated into any of the four turtle uh, emblems. So that's a cool little t little t little feature. A little bit of gimmick in this, which is rare on a modern Transformer. So there's the Leonardo configuration, Donatello configuration, Raphael configuration, and, of course, Michelangelo. Going in the proper order, by the way. If you put your turtles in any other order besides this, you're wrong. I do really like how like the guns from the turtle wagon are still popped up over the top. Uh, I always like the I always kind of like seeing the gun barrels pointed out of the back like that. Um, that does mean the top of the vehicle forms the turtle shell, 
that works and makes total sense as well. It's a little kibbly, but they actually make really good use of the kibble in this figure. Uh, all of this can actually hide the turtle weapons. All of the turtle weapons have some kind of hiding spot or mounting point somewhere on Party Wallop. So you do have the ability to keep all the weapons on them at all times. Um, I think I think you are still just like keep a baggie full of masks on hand. Uh, so I don't think the I don't think the extra head pieces have anywhere to go. But at the very least, you got this. So it's it's actually really cool. I mean, this means that Party Wallop himself is like very much kind of doing a last Ronin thing of I can use all of the turtles' weapons. Oh my god! So I'm just saying, like, how cool would this be? I already have, I already know people who want this to be Metalhead. I have already, you know, now I'm thinking, like, this could be the last Ronin, too, because he has all the weapons. Oh, man, I would love to see this. I would love to see this redone a few times. Oh, my God. And you know it's going to sell, because people are going to buy four of these to get a hold of one of every turtle. I have got four on pre-order, not going to lie. Um... You know there's people are going to buy a fifth so they can have Party Wallop separate. You know there's people are going to buy a sixth so they can also have the Party Wagon separate. Uh, you know there's people are going to buy a seventh so they can keep one in package. Uh, speaking of the package, there's what it looks like. I'm not a huge fan of it, if I'm being completely honest here. Um, they are trying for kind of a split between how the Transformer packaging looks and how the Ninja Turtle packaging looks. Uh, so I will I'll give it that that they've got to blend the two together, uh, and I do like that they included this kind of like did you know this kind of like futuristic turtle shell look into the, to the bubble. So at least you got that going for it. It's not a bad packaging. It's not a bad packaging. It's just weird to see the two mashed up. It's still surreal. It's surreal to see the Transformer logo with a bunch of official Ninja Turtles surrounding it. That's super weird to my brain. All right, uh, because there's a new movie coming up, they also mentioned that, hey, um, Ectotron's getting another re-release. This will be release number three, by the way, but this one looks like, I believe, or um, I can't, jeez, it's been so long since I stared at mine. I think with the goggles down, this is the second head sculpt. I can't tell. I can't tell. Whatever. Uh, Ectotron's coming out again. Doesn't, doesn't matter, but you got another chance. Still a cool figure. Uh, and then they did what they have not done in a while, which is Space Bridge Reveals. Uh, and they fully admitted that all of these have leaked in one way or another, and some are actually available. So I won't give them, I, I don't want to give them uh, a hard time anymore over like how late they are as far as like real Transformer news cycle goes. There's only so much they can do. They're only allowed to say so much. They can only go so far, et cetera, et cetera. They have to work with what they're given, et cetera, et cetera, whatever. Um, you know, and there's big corporate overlords who told them they can't do anything newer than this. But when it's at the point where you're not allowed to show the toy on stream, you're not allowed to actually show this brand new figure on stream. You have to just tell them, hey, we're making it in the Space Bridge style of reveal. When it's already available on retail shelves. That's really bad. That's really bad. Now, in this case, it's because they're saving it for WonderCon. What I'm about to show you is most likely what they're going to announce at WonderCon. So, uh, yeah, we're only going to have to wait a few days on that one. But no, let's see here. Yep, Studio Series, Concept, uh, Sunstreaker. This one's already been spotted at U.S. Retail. Uh, yep, Studio Series, uh, or uh, Gamer Edition, Sideswipe. Um, yeah, they mentioned wanting to make sure they got him from the ground up. And they were very clear that they specifically got them in this him in the same wave of Sunstreaker. Let's see, uh, Shockwave again. People already have this one in hand, so nothing new here. Uh, the only one that really got me excited is they actually acknowledge that Studio Series Swoop is uh, officially a thing. He is officially a leader class, and it seems like he's gonna he along, along with all of these are gonna be very very close to being officially announced. So yeah, I'm expecting these to be at WonderCon. Because WonderCon is supposed to be where they're doing Studio Series stuff. Uh, just had to wait and see. And of course, if that's what it becomes, we'll be here again doing another discussion just like this about my thoughts on what all gets revealed. Um, so, last week to play the bingo cards, how'd you do? I'm happy to say I finally got a bingo because this one was all over the place. Um, 
uh, they did man they did mention uh, they did mention the fan channels, not specifically with that terminology, but they did mention them. So I'm getting away. I'm giving myself a technicality here, uh, but they, they did mention that uh, fan sites would be selling the toys. So I'm going to give I'm going to give it credit here. Uh, all the new all the new toy reveals had already been leaked. Uh, we got reveals of stuff that wasn't toys, uh, and then of course they're doing the reissue of Ectotron. That gives me my that gives me my bingo. Very full list this time. I think there's a lot of potential winners out there if you're still playing. So those are my thoughts on the stream. I mean, I still don't agree with this policy of letting all their partners announce these things and then then being late to the curb. I don't like this idea of them announcing, hey, it's going to be available to order at 1 p.m. And then, like, I pre-ordered my four-pack at 11 a.m. Um, what, what, what? I, I, I don't know how that worked. I don't know how that worked. So, I, I, there, there's a lot of bells and whistles here that are in motion at the same time. And they need to get it all straightened out, you know? Like, they need to be the first ones to reveal and then let the news outlets have the full press release later on. They need to be the ones to, you know, they, you know, the, the site itself needs to hold off until they say they're available now, you know, you know, take a, take a cue from like Nintendo directs. So like when Nintendo direct says like, oh, this game is available now. It is literally available now. So I don't know. It's still a weird mixed bag, but at least this one was fun. And at least this one had some really cool stuff to talk about. So, let me know in the comments below what you thought, what your favorite item is. How many Thunder, you know, or, uh, tur or, uh, Party Wallops? Man, man, trying to find the name. Uh, how many, it's a dumb name. How many Party Wallops will you be buying? Um, yeah, feel free to discuss it below. And as always, I will see you next time.